Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. James chapter 1. James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God and Jesus one. They're not two separate beings. The Trinity is one times one times one equals one. To the Twelve tribes, Israel, Israel's is twelve tribes, Ishmael's is twelve princes, uh, Edom is dukes. So the book is written to Jewish people which are scattered aboard greetings. Now this scattered abroad would count for the fact is that uh, we're writing to save individuals. And when they got saved in Jerusalem, they had to leave Jerusalem because they're no more welcome. They're diverse. You'll see them everywhere and anywhere in the book of Acts. We're about 60 AD in this book. I, I don't know if that date's correct, but better date than what I can come up with. Ten years. The temple is going to be destroyed. They're going to be scattered even more. Today, they don't even know which tribe they are of. They can only guess. They're trying to find out, but they don't know. In the tribulation, they will get their tribe identity by the 144,000. And they'll be scattered all over again because the Antichrist will be after them. A lot of the book of James is practical for the church age. It's practical for the tribulation period. And the one main warning that we're going to see from chapter 1 all the way to the end of the book is warnings against rich people. And we'll get those as we come. Greeting. So James, like Hebrews, is written to Jews. My brethren, Jewish people and saved Jews, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That seems to be the subject of chapter 1. Temptations. Count it for joy. Because it can show your strength. And it can show your weakness. And when one time you think that temptation comes. You are great and strong. And then pride comes in. And you fall the next time. We're all sinners. Saved by grace. We got to keep on our toes when it comes to temptations. We may pass it this week and fail it tomorrow. Knowing, knowing this, you don't know. Why would you know that the trying of your faith worketh patience? Now that's a word that we saw in Hebrews: patience of Job. Patience comes by trying, by temptation. Gives us the sense of waiting and not hurrying. Who wants to hurry through? I mean, that temptation comes along, you fail. You don't want to hurry through it. Because you probably already learned or you will learn. Rush makes mistakes. Most Workplace accidents are because somebody's in a rush. Accidents on the road happen because you're in a rush. 
And I'm speaking to myself. We are to wait for that red light. Today we were coming home at a stop sign. We saw this motorcycle booming right through. The first reaction, man, if somebody had, had taken their turn, stopped, and gone, that guy would be in some serious trouble because what was the temptation? Oh, go right through. We know patience comes on through, through temptation. And we're to know this. Know this. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire, complete, wanting nothing. Now that entire would be also a great word that's used in the Bible as perfect. All that God wants you to be. Let patience, don't give up on patience, have her perfect work. It takes time to work on patience. That's why patience is so hard, because it takes patience to learn patience. And with the result of temptation and patience, you get a perfect and entire work wanting nothing. You get crowns. We'll see in verse 12. If you, if you successfully beat the temptation, you'll get crowns. Not now. you got to wait. You know the problem with the churches today? We'll give you your rewards now. We'll give you your Tootsie Roll now. We'll give you a little, your little plastic whistle now. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you don't get it when you wait for it at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. If any of you lack wisdom, you are coming across something in your life, you're coming something about reading your Bible, there's something that you need to be wise about. A choice, a decision. Let him, now we talk to brethren, verse 2, save people, that's me, ask of God. And Jesus spoke about this in the gospel. Paul spoke about it. So many times we're so afraid to ask God. We're going to see this in another chapter in James. We think we can do it our own ways and we make a mess. Because we weren't patient. And we didn't ask God. We didn't seek God. We did not wait for God's answer. He answers in three ways. Yes, no, not now. And when he says not now, that's the trying of your patience. Let him ask of God, not man, that giveth to all men liberty. God will give you a countless supply of giving, of wisdom. And upbraideth, charge wrong or disgraceful, not. He's not going to charge you wrong. He's not going to make you disgraceful with it. His answer to prayer, the wisdom that you seek, when he answers you with it, it will not be the wrong. Now, if you use it wrongly, that's your fault. Now, God, if, you know, I need this, I need this vehicle. Mine, you know, is not so good. And God answers prayer, well, here's the wisdom. Give it a little time, save a little money, and then get it. Oh, no, 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 you know, it's, and then you get it, and then you lose your job, or you ain't got the funds no more. Anything could be under asking God for counsel. And you... And a bride is not, and it shall be given him. Don't charge God with wrong, and don't treat God disrespectful after you thank, after you ask of him. You know, if you do get an answer as no, don't. Oh, God, such a meanie God. I deserve it. No, God knows better. 
But let him ask in faith. Imagine someone asking God something, a saved person, saved, and you don't believe God's going to answer your prayer. There's some ridiculous things I've asked God over the years that God, listen, I know this is ridiculous. I know this is stupid. It's probably carnal. But the Bible says, I ask not, I receive not because I ask not. So I'm going to go ahead and ask. And the worst thing you can do is to say no and we'll pass it up and let time forget. But I've got the faith for even the stupidest thing I ask for God. And there are people, according to chapter 1 of the very first chapter of this book, there are people who ask God of things and they don't believe he's going to answer it. Nothing, nothing wavering. God can't do it. God can do it. God can't do it. God can God really do it? Is God really going to? It's no trust. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. It just causes more damage than it does any good. And then disappears. Once it hits the beach or hits rocks or wherever, it, it's gone. It didn't do nothing. It, it tosses a ship up and down. And there, there's a chapter in the book of Proverbs speaking about a drunken man. He's up there riding on that mask, getting all sick, and you know. Get faith in God. You had faith in God to save you. Put faith in God. Now listen, I am not saying God's going to give you a blank check. But you got to count God some prayers. You know what? Whether he says yes, whether he says no, or he says not now, you got to have faith that God knows better than you. And let a man ask in faith. That goes for no answer too. Okay, I guess God don't want me to have it. Whatever reason God sees, it's a no. God, thank you. You're a wonderful God. You're looking out for me. You're a father that cares for his son. But see, we can't go into prayer life and ask him, yes, 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 yes. That's a spoiled brat. Let, uh, for, excuse me, for let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. And now don't go walking in the throne. God, I demand it because look at me. Look who I am. Look how wonderful I am, God. Don't walk into the throne room of God prideful. Because you'll be going down for a fall. Don't walk up to God like, you know, you're doing God a favor. With your nose stuck up in the air. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's unbelief. And that's just a spiritual and a physical condition of man. If he's got his mind in two different places, he's unstable in all his way. You can't live holy and you can't live unholy. You can't be, the Bible says, you know, walking with God and walking with the world. You've got to step somewhere. You've got to set your mind. Because if you go driving down the road on the right side of the road one day, and then you go driving down the left side of the road one day, you're going to get in an accident. And then you'll be unstable. You'll be hurting. And Proverbs 3, 5 and Matthew 6, 24. Set your mind straight. And Timothy says, God has given us a, a mind of, uh, not of fear, but of power. Let the brother, saved, of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Logery, put down. And with the Jews right at this point in time in the tribulation period, they are being put down. They are being rejected by their family, by their brethren, by the, uh, the temple, by the Pharisees, by the Sadducees, by everyone. Because they have trusted on Jesus Christ as their Savior. Listen, not only James and Peter and Paul were all put in jail. Paul spoke of many fellow prisoners. Running through Asia and, and Jerusalem and Israel and throughout the land of the Bible, the book of Acts, Christians, saved Christians, Jewish people 
were put in jail, were uh, were put off from their families, had to leave. There was a blind, blind man that Jesus gave sight to, and evidently in his, in his walk with Jesus, they kicked him out of the temple. His family wouldn't even stick up for him in fear of being kicked out of the temple. Let God be exalted. But the rich, here goes the first warning. But the rich, let low degree that he be exalted. The one that's in the low degree, let, let him be praised up. But the rich, in that he is made low, passive, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. The rich in his pride, God will bring low, and God will descend that lawnmower over him. And grass in the Old Testament time, you know, it, it was it grew. The, Jesus said it's picked and it's put on the rooftops and it's burnt and dried. It's mowed, cut up. It has no value. Now I'm not saying rich men can get can't get saved, but Jesus said about the rich man, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle, a literal needle, not no gate, than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. And Paul warns Timothy, you tell those people in the congregation the love of money, and he's speaking to Christians. And there have been many Christians that have been lost. I mean, excuse me. There have been many Christians that have been rich. And there's been many rich people that are lost because of their wealth. It's one of those things that, you know, the love of money, but... Money does have that thing that really ruins people's lives. Many people who win the lottery or win, you know, that, that, that prize or that jackpot have ruined their lives even though they got a vast amount of money. You can waste it. And money can waste your soul. That man that Jesus spoke the parable of, oh, look at all this great stuff. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tear it all down and I'll put it all in, in the uh, space center over there and put it all in you know in stocks and i'll put it in in uh warehouses and god says thou fool tonight thy soul shall be required you're gonna die and you can't take it with you you may put it in that coffin or you may put it in that that pyramid but it ain't yours no longer for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. So grass is likened to a rich man. Comes up, and most grass doesn't even have a flower. You get a dandelion, the dandelion is the weed. I like dandelions. I like dandelions over grass. I rather have a whole lawn of beautiful yellow flowers in that green mush we got grass here in our backyard that when it, you don't mow it you send the dog out the dog comes back green pickery that's ugly it's disgusting and then you go out there with a lawnmower and with the florida heat not even before it starts getting sundown that stuff is dead already The flowers are the beautiful. I like the flowers. I hate grass. I like flowers. Blessed, happy is the man that endureth temptation. Temptation is good. Endure it. Every man will be tempted. Jesus Christ was tempted by Satan. Whether you're saved, lost, male, female, young, old, you're going to be tempted. Proverbs 1 speaks about to the, to the son. Listen, they're going to come and tempt you to do a crime. Don't do it. You'll be sitting there, you know, you'll be tempted in that store. Do I steal it? I ain't got enough money. Do I steal it? Well, I'll be tempted, you know, to lie to mom. I'll be tempted to lie to the boss. Be tempted to do something wrong. That temptation it physically will appear in all our lives as it did appear to Jesus. Blessed the man that endure it, go through a temptation. For when he is tried, and you will be, 
he shall receive a crown of life. So here's another crown of crowns we've read through Pauline epistles. This crown is when you have been put with a temptation and you succeeded in that temptation and you didn't give in to that temptation, you will get a crown of life. Now, we'll get a crown of life because sometimes, hey, we, we did good and other times we did bad. We won't get a crown of life. We'll get wood, hay, or stubble or we have to put it under the blood and God don't remember it at all. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. You love the Lord? Endure that temptation. Loving God and God loving you. It's not going to stop that temptation. But it will give you help. When you get up in the morning and say. God you know this one particular sin. This two particular sin. Or just Lord I am just so weak. I need your help today. And God will help you. Again. Paul says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, To them that love his appearing, there's another crown. You've got to love God. Well, you know, all, I keep falling on my sin. I keep doing this. I can't. Because you don't love the Lord. And if you don't love the Lord, two verses here, 2 Timothy 4 and James chapter 1. I'm not saying you're not saved, but if you don't love the Lord, you're not going to get no crowns. Because you're not going to do anything for him. You're going to not want him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted. Of God made me do it. Satan made me do it. No, you did it. It is your fault. Job was tempted, tempted by devil and God gave Satan the opportunity to go do it. Twice we read. And Job said, no, I am not going to blame God foolishly. I am not, dear, you're talking as one of them foolish wives are talking. I am not going to curse God. Naked I came out of the womb and naked I shall go back. I'm going to love God and serve God and do right. Job is a perfect example of this verse. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Now, evil, again, is the result of sin. Having a bad liver from alcohol, that's evil. Having to go to jail because of your sin, that's evil. Being in the eyes of God, disgusting, wretched, unclean, that's evil because of your sins. Evil is a consequence of sin. The Bible says uh, God made evil. Oh, God make evil. Yeah, God made a consequence for a sin. He didn't make the sin. That's our fault. But God made a consequence for the sin evil. And what's God's reaction to the evil? We read in Hebrews. Chastisement. For those that are his. That he loves. His children. Listen, little, little Johnny, he's got a burn mark on his finger from the stove that mom warned him and dad warned him. And still, listen, he may get a paddle on the butt. He still got that mark because he disobeyed. The evil is he's either going to have that scar for a little time or for a long time. That scar is the evil disobeying. Neither tempteth he God any man. God does not need to tempt us. In Genesis 22, we saw, well, God tempted Abraham. Well, that's, a that's no contradiction. God wanted to show Abraham where his love was. And Abraham learned that afternoon at the end of that chapter. Wow, I really love God. I love God more than I love my son. And I had more faith in God than I realized because I was going to sit down and wait for that resurrection. Now see, it strengthened. It gave Abraham patience. Just wait it out. Because in the long run of that afternoon, stop! Don't kill your son. There's a ram over there. But every man is tempted. All right, here's the temptation. 
when he draws away of his own lust, whatever your lust is, what is it that you desire, you want, your mouth waters, your body runs to, you really want, you would give up God for that, whatever that is, that's lust. Paul calls that lust, and I forget where it is, in one of his epistles, let's see what note I have here. I don't have it. He calls lust coveting. What you want? Oh, you mean no? That's pornography on on the TV or a magazine. No. That's a man sleeping with a with a whore. No. That's adultery and fornicating couple. No. That's something you want. It could be a chocolate bar. Overeating chocolate bars. It could be ice cream. It could be money. It can be sex. It could be marijuana. It could be not wanting to go to church and serving God. It's your own thing. Just do it. That's lust. And whenever that thing is put in front of you to do whatever you don't want to do for God and you want to do for yourself and enticed. Enticed. That's an interesting kind of word of reference to magic and seances and all that other, you know, mind boggling. No, it's not mind boggling. It's what the nature of man is. The, the, the nature of man is he wants to go against God and he wants to fulfill the flesh. And we've seen Paul write to us that we have a battle going on amongst ourselves, the flesh and the spirit. What the spirit wants, the flesh don't want. What the flesh wants, the spirit don't want. And when you give in to that flesh, whatever it is, that's the lust. You ever heard anybody say, well, I lust reading the Bible. I, oh, I'm coveting to, to mark my Bible. Entice. Now watch this one. 15 is an interesting verse. Then when lust has conceived, oh, like bringing on forth a child, <laughs> you know, and conceive, you know, just how that sexual relationship, it bringeth forth sin, like a child. Here's your baby sin. Well, I didn't want that. Well, you, you made it. You grew it. And sin, when it finished, Bring it forth death, Romans 6, 23. Now, how interesting is Satan? In verse 15. You don't think Satan knows the Bible? I'll tell you. Let me say, Lucy with, with diamonds in the sky. Anybody know what that was? That was a song by perverts. And was Lucy in the sky with diamonds represent LSD? Drug. Watch in 15. Then when lust, L... Has conceived and bringing forth sin, S. And sin, when it is finished, bringing forth death, D. There's the Bible, LSD. Lust, sin, death. How do you like that one? And look what chapter it's in. I mean, what verse is in. Five, 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 five. Death, death, death. That's just quite interesting, isn't it? Do not err. I don't like that word, error, but do not err, my beloved brethren. Talking to saved people. But never mind the worldly people. Mind mind those that don't not say. Christians. We've got to conquer temptation. We can't give in to it. We've got to say what the world says. Say no. Say no to sin and temptation. That's hard, isn't it? That's very hard. And Christ never had, Christ had no sin. And yet he was tempted. The devil gave him three temptations we record in, in Matthew and Luke. And yet he was tempted through his, his entire ministry. Those Pharisees and Sadducees tried to tempt him with anger to get so angry he would blow it. They tried to tempt him of, of being so wicked. Hey, here's an adulterous woman. They tried to tempt him to, get, to lose his patience by stupid questions. 
And he never sinned. And he never failed. We do. That's why we got 1 John 1, 9. When we do sin. When we do fall. We. Every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Holy Spirit is a gift. We just were told, ask God anything. If he, if he gives us something and he's our father, then that's a gift. You ever hear of a bad gift? Here, son, here's a pack of cigarettes. It's a gift for you. That's not a good gift. That's not a perfect gift. Well, maybe some parents do that. Maybe some parents. Here, son, here, here's some marijuana. Here's a needle and a mirror and a straw that you start doing. I don't know, but that's not the perfect. It's not. Good gift. Perfect gift. It has nothing to do with that temptation. It's a complete opposite of lust and sin. It's of God. The rest of it is of your own nature, thanks to the serpent. What do you do to fight temptation? Take the good gift. Take the perfect gift. In order to get rid of a bad habit, you got to fill it with a good habit. In order to fight that temptation, we got God who's given us a good and a perfect gift. Something better. What? How about getting a crown of life that we can show for all eternity? God, if I say no to that, I have an opportunity to get a crown that I may be able to toss it at you. How's that? Cometh down from the Father of Lights. And that's messed with. That's messed with in, in the, these modern Christian songs and and churches and all that. And then, with whom is no variableness. God does not worry. God is not lukewarm. God does not walk down the middle of the street. God is not going to hang out with your saved and your unsaved friends. God is not going to come down at your family picnic where you got your saved and your unsaved families there. He's not going to do that. He has a right. There's no wrong with God. He has set it down in black and white. This black and white called the Bible, 66 books, King James Bible, is going to judge us one day. And when we go against God and his word, we'll be at fault. When we do that which is right by the word of God, by what God has told you, then we'll be right by God. Righteousness, and that righteousness belongs to Jesus Christ and not what I've done. God will be patting nobody. You know, I know you tried, little boy. I know you tried, little girl. Here, have a tootsie roll. No. Neither shadow of turning. What he said. God is sure. If God were to violate his word, he'd be a liar. And he's not. He's incapable. He cannot and will never lie. He says, if you if you don't receive that temptation, you get out of that successfully, I got a crown for you. If you don't, I got death for you. The wages of sin and death. Now, well, how do I know that I failed in temptation? I'm going to die. If the Lord tarries, I will die. Which means what? I have not successfully I have not successfully made it through every temptation in my life. I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. Anybody says they don't sin? Well, I guess they don't die. That's wrong. They will die. Of his own he begat, he begat he us with the word of truth, Jesus Christ, the word, the Bible. That we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Ephesians 1.13 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, say people, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. What's the saying? One mouth, two ears. Slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not to the righteousness of God. I'll do whatever I can to get it over on him. The vengeance is mine. Oh, I forgot to say it to the Lord. I know somebody used to quote that verse in their own words. Vengeance is mine. Forget to say, say it to the Lord. 
been a lot of wrath of people in this world. They don't win. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I'll do whatever I can uh, to get even with them. That's not a Christian's saying. Wait till I get even with you. That's not Christian. That is not the righteousness of God. It's quite different. I'll break up that church. I'll. That's not right. I'll destroy that family. That's not right. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. How's that? All filthiness. If it's filthy, get rid of it. You know what you do with something filthy? You get the vacuum cleaner out or you get the broom out and you, you, you pick it up and throw it in the garbage and bring it to the dump. Superfluity of naughtiness. Now that's an interesting word. Superfluity. That's a word you're not going to see uh, anywhere on the internet. And that is overflowing with wickedness. Not just wickedness, overflowing with naughtiness. You know what naughty was? According to Jeremiah about those figs, evil, wicked. There was evil figs. There were naughty figs. Naughty figs were the evil figs. It's just wicked. Get rid of it. Take it out of your life. Whether it be a person, place, or thing. Get rid of it. 21. And receive with meekness. That's opposite of pride. That's your humble. The engrafted. That is implanted word. You know like when you take a branch. And you put it into a, another tree. You cut into that tree. And you put that branch in there. And you, you, you tie it up. And then you tape it up. And you expect that branch to become part of that tree. Engrafted word. That word has been applied, cut into our lives, where the word was never before we were saved. Now we come from this, we come from a new creature, we come from our old life, and God has put into us the word of life, which is able to save your soul. Ooh. So you've got to have the word of God to be saved. There's no shadow about it. Say, I was saved. Tell me about it. And then, did you have a Bible there? Oh, no, no, no. I, I had no Bible? Did they quote to you scripture? Oh, no, 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 no. You got to have the word. And I call the question, I don't know if I really, how far I go simply, but if you ain't got the right Bible, I call a question. Engrafted word that is able to save your soul, my eternal being. So when I go down the street and preach to the lost people, I bring the Bible and open the Bible and read to them from the Bible. I don't tell them what I think. I don't care what I think. I don't give them those stories. I give them Bible stories. I tell them what the Bible says. I don't make it a playtime. But be doers. Doer. You're, that's a verb. Mark all the verbs in your Bible. Be ye doers of the word that you were just had engrafted in, in, in you. Not only has that word been put into your life, has saved your soul, now be doers of it. And not hearers only. Now, wait a minute. Verse 19. <coughs> Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So you hear the word and you do what the word tells you to do. But you better be careful what you hear. You better not do something that's in this Bible that is not meant for you to do. You better learn how to place application. You better study to show thyself approved unto God. There's a lot of heresies. There's a lot of perversion. There's a lot of cults out there, and they hold the Bible. And watch this. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Don't sit in church and just hear it and don't do nothing. Don't get the cassette tape or CD or the, 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 the live stream or whatever you do. Just, you know, I heard it. 
I've got all these messages. But do you do anything with it? No, I don't do nothing with it. Deceiving your own selves. If you don't put an application of word in your life, you are deceiving yourself. You got to be doers. For if any be a hearer of the word, ooh, now we're going about the word. Context is the word. And not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Would be a mirror. He's looking at himself in the mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. Oh, look at that. Huh. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That looked good. And he walks off. You put your face in the Bible. You know what you see? Oh, oh, tonight I'm reading James chapter 1. I've got a problem with temptation. So what am I going to do about temptation? I read three chapters today. I'll read three tomorrow. What profit did you do? Nothing. Just, well, yep, yeah, that says it. Okay. But the reward is, Lord, all right, temptation. That's what we're reading about today. I've got a problem with that. And, Lord, you know what? Next week I am not going to remember this thing. I need your help, Lord. And you're trying to put it okay, And today, temptation, or tomorrow, and you're in temptation. Boom! I, I'm not going to do that. No! I said, no, don't do it. I can get a crown. I forget which crown it is, but I can get a crown if I say no. You're putting the word to action. And God can use that. You're doing it. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And you make excuses. You're deceiving yourself. You're a deceiver. Really? Yeah, you. And Paul has warned us, and Jesus has warned us, and Peter will warn us, and Jude will warn us. Be careful of deceivers, and James says, you are the biggest deceiver of your own life when you don't do what that word of God says. Oh, have got to watch out for the Roman Catholic Church. You've got to watch out for the charismatic. Oh, don't let those Jehovah Witnesses come in your, in, into your house. But when it comes to the Bible, what, what was that message the preacher preached? It was a, such a good message. What did you do about it? Nothing. You deceived yourself. And imagine God charging you with deceiving, and the only person you deceived was yourself. That'd be kind of embarrassing. But, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, the word, about the word, talk about the word, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed, happy in his deed. God will reward you. God will help you. Even when you forget, maybe that one time, scripture memorization of your sins will help you. You say, what will it do? The Holy Spirit reminds you. You remember that verse that, I t that you, you memorized? Remember that verse is about your sin? Don't do it. It's trying to help you. And you may forget that you can get a crown. Oh, well, yeah, you know what, God, you love me and I love you. I'm not going to do that. And even if you forget the reward of the crown, you know enough by the Bible. The Bible says don't give in those temptations. You're doing it by the word of God. And then, you know what, what's that crown for, Jesus? Oh, I forgot all about that. I just knew the word of God says I wasn't supposed to do that. Yes, and you, you did what you were supposed to. And... I'm going to reward you. If any man among you seem to be religious. Uh oh, here's another, here's another thing. Religious. And bridles not his tongue. He does not shut his mouth up. He said, what about a preacher? He's called to preach. He's called to teach. We're going to see about religion in a moment. Because religious people will fight you. They'll argue with you. They'll tell you, shut up. They'll tell you, they give all kinds of that. But deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. So number one of religion. If he can't put a bridle on his tongue, it's vain. It's worthless. Pure religion. If there's Pure religion. 
and undefiled before God. And the Father is the now you're gonna say that and before God and the Father. You're gonna say God and the Father are two different people, like Titus 2 13, where it says God and Jesus Christ. Are you gonna go so far to say that God and the Father are now two different people? You did they do it for Titus 2 13. So they scripture with scripture. Is this to visit the fatherless? And widows. Now that was in the law. The fatherless and the widows. The, the, the children have no more dad. And the wife that has no more husband. You're to help them. You're to visit them. You're to, to comfort them. That was not done in the Old Testament. Even though it was in the law. In their affliction. They got troubles. They got problems. Visit them. Nursing home ministry. You know anybody involved in the nursing home ministry? Put their names here. Put that nursing home. So when you read this, you can say, I want to pray for that person or for that that, that uh, nursing home. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. Well, when you got an organization that's religion, they got their priests doing illegal things and doing molesting things and they're still serving idolatry and Bible. That's not pure religion. Now let's look at some verses here about religion real quick. Because it shows up six times in the Bible twice here. Six is the number of man. That's quite interesting. When we look at the word religion, let's see what we're talking about. Acts 13, 43. So when somebody comes up to you, I got religion. They don't know what the Bible says. Acts 13, 43. Because they definitely have not studied their Bible. And no, these are all in the New Testament, by the way, too. Acts 13, 43. Two in Acts and one in Galatians and two in James. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So here are people who are religious, and now they've turned to Paul. They left the religion. That's interesting. I got my religion, you got yours. Will you convert to Jesus? Oh, no, I'm going to keep what I... Okay. You got religion. I've got Christ. That's the difference. 26.5, Acts 26, verse 5. Some people don't speak. I mean, some people speak what they don't know. And if you know the Bible, you know they're fools. Anybody comes up to, like I said, we preach on the street. Anybody comes up to, oh, Jesus would never do that. <laughs> really? Judge not, least you be judged. Can you show me what that is in the Bible? All right, Acts 26, verse number 5. Watch this one. We all know Paul, right? Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify. He's talking to the Jew. He's talking to the court. He's saying, listen, bring these Jews that bring me to jail right here. Brought me to court. Testify. Speak to them. They'll tell you about me. That after the most straightest sect. Uh -oh, that's a bad religious word. Sect. Of our religion. I lived a Pharisee. Now, would you think most of the Pharisees would go to heaven? Absolutely not. Very few of them did. Uh, um, Nicodemus, what well, he was going. John of Army. Okay, that, but the majority of the Pharisees were what? They were a sect of a religion. That's not good. So we just saw right now two condensations for, for religion, and it's not good in your Bible. Galatians 1, 13 and 14. Religion is not a good word. Galatians 1, 13 and 14. I tell people when they come up, well, what religion are you? I tell them born again Baptist. Or I sometimes take the Baptist off to say born again Christian. I'm not the way these Baptist brethren are. I'm ashamed. All right. Uh, first, I don't know. First Galatians. Galatians 1, 13. For ye have heard of my conversion. What was that? 
That's when Paul got, received Christ as Savior, right? In times past in the Jewish... What's that word? Religion. Well, that was the Old Testament law. We're not under that. That's a bad condemnation. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted. Wait a minute. Didn't we just learn in Acts 26, 5 that Paul was in that religion? And what was Paul doing with his religion? He was persecuting the Christians. We're not done yet. And profited the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation. Watch this. Being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions. So when we close in James, we, we, we look at religion. There's only one real good verse about it, and that's James 1.27, about if you've got a pure religion, you're going to do some good things. But we see the other places, hey, it's coming out of something that God does not approve of anymore, that God never approved of, something a man set up today to Jesus Christ as your Savior. And it, it's never called Christianity I mean the true Christians being born again of God by Jesus Christ in the gospel. It's never called a religion because these six places, the only places religion shows up in the Bible. And we just went through them all. So this is a little interesting note.